Good morning, everybody. My name is Frank Baker. I'm the chair of the Boston City Council Committee on Arts, Culture, Tourism, and Special Events. Today, I'm joined by my colleague, Liz Braden. Uh, and this hearing is being recorded and broadcast on Xfinity Channel 8, RCN Channel 82, Fios 964, as well as live stream at boston.gov slash city dash council slash TV. Um, and if there are any additional people that would like to uh, testify publicly, you can email to ron.cobb at boston.gov. Um, today's hearing is docket 0549. It's a message in order authorizing the city of Boston to accept and expend the amount of $2,051,903 in the form of a grant for the Boston Cultural Fund awarded by the Boston Redevelopment Authority, be, Authority to be administered by the Office of Arts and Culture. The grant will fund cultural spaces, organizations, programs, artists, and activities in the South End with the goal of pre preserving and enhancing cultural activities. Um, thank you for that. And, and um, I think I'd like to start out like we had discussed. Dwayne, I'd like you to um, voice your vo have your input heard first, and then we'll go to the administration. If you could just state your name and affiliation address for the record, please. Great. Thank you very much. My name is Dwayne Lucia. I'm the president of the West End Museum. Okay. Um, and I want to apologize for my lack of information on this subject. I just found out about it two days ago. Um, basically, I had two questions. One is why this money is being restricted to a single neighborhood, the South End, uh, instead of being more equitably allocated. And then my second question is, over the last 10 years, how much has the Boston Cultural Fund allocated to the West End as a neighborhood. Thank you, Dwayne. And, and I, I think when we get into our presentations, those those would be answered. Uh, with, with that, Liz, would you like to have an opening statement? Um, uh, uh, Councillor Baker, no, I will, I will hold my statement. I, I do have to jump off probably about uh, 2.40. Um, so um, I will just move things along and... Um, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. And, and Carla, um, Cara, sorry, uh, you're, you're welcome to start. And if we could touch on some, you know, my opening statement would have been, why just the South End? Where is this money coming in? Uh, I have my assumptions. I think I can understand what it is. But if you can speak to that, where is the money coming in? Is it is it directly from South End development, if that's the case? Are you now going to be a uh, an agent for us to be able to do this across the city more often with, say, West End Development taking money from BRA, BPDA, and through your office go into to help cultural organizations in, in other neighborhoods? So thank you for coming out today, Karen, and, and, and you can pass it on to who you, whoever you need to when you're done. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Councillor. Um, thanks for your questions, Duane. So this funding is the result of a very specific piece of zoning code in a specific area of the South End that requires a developer, um, in this case, it's specifically attached to the 321 Harrison Avenue project to provide, uh, they're required to provide below market commercial and or retail space. Um, and specifically, it's in the amount equal to or greater than 5% of the gross floor area within the development plan and above what is allowed uh, as of right in that sub-district. So it's very specific kind of piece of zoning that predates, I think, um, maybe even the existence of the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. Um, but as developments move forward in this area, um, it has come up and come into play um, and so in this specific case of this development, they have an obligation to provide about 10,000 square feet of uh, affordable commercial space. And the zoning stipulates that the space needs to be for use by an existing or startup business or nonprofit organization. And then the intention here was to um, create some stability and opportunity for local organizations and businesses. So in this specific case, the development has created about 6,000 square feet of affordable cultural space on site 
And we're actually really excited about the use of that space because it's being um, leased to the New England Foundation for the Arts, which serves hundreds of local organizations and local artists and uh, have been really great partners to the city. Uh, that does leave uh, another 4,000 square feet. Um, and what the developers done in this case is that they want to buy that out as a monetary contribution, which is also allowed in the zoning code. So originally this funding was intended for um, the Boston Local Development Corporation or BLDC to receive these funds. Um, that has not worked out. Um, it's not as feasible to establish a fund at the BLDC for this, particularly for affordable space for cultural organizations, given that our office does exist and we make you know, over 300 grants a year um, to organizations and individuals. So we've been in conversation with the BPDA about how to receive these funds in order to kind of live out the intention of um, supporting these kinds of spaces uh, because the development is in the South End and that's where the zoning restriction is coming from that's kind of kicking this all off. That's why there's a relationship to that geography. Um, but I think that um, Councillor Baker, as you pointed out, this is a really good opportunity for us to pilot a new sort of relationship in terms of being able to receive funds and redistribute them. And I think also um, we have a chance to pilot a new way of thinking about affordable cultural spaces because we have been in a lot of conversations with developments that are, you know, whether it's because of a zoning requirement or because of a community benefit, some developments are trying to create that kind of space. Um, we're trying to figure out how to match organizations and local groups to that space. And we've always been a little bit on the kind of reactive side of doing that instead of proactive. Um, and it's always a little bit of, uh, uh, not a scramble, but it's a little bit of work to try to figure out who's really ready to just step into something. Because if you're a small organization or group and you've never taken advantage of that before, you've never run a space or signed a 10 year lease, you know, it's, it's a lot to expect somebody to just be able to step into that, um, and be able to take advantage of that opportunity when it happens. So what we're thinking of specifically with these funds is to pilot- Howard, Howard can, can, I oh, ask, yeah. can I ask a question quick there? Um, yeah. So 321 Harrison, is this, was this a result of, uh, this money was an article, was it a result of Article 80 um, negotiations between neighborhood and the developer? It was not, it's a result of a different piece of zoning. It's written into zoning code. So my my question moving forward is, would would this would this be a way for us to say with, and we'll go back down to the, the West End, would this be a way in Article 80 of neighborhoods or, or organizations asking for cultural space and being able to get it into get it into um, those Article 80 documents to send money into you to come back into the neighborhood? Yeah, I think that's that's definitely possible. And we've had um, a couple experiences of trying to do that. I think the benefit of funding coming through the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture is that we can do the work around supporting an organization. So if there's a space and there's some organizations, we can come in and support technical assistance. We can help support consultants. We can give grants to organizations. We can think about how much of that is um, the actual fit out of the space. Um, we can bring in other partners who do this kind of cultural facility work specifically. So we can kind of fill in the gaps between a space being committed and the need that's kind of on the ground in the community. So um, that's the role that we would hope to pilot with this funding. And there are spaces specifically coming up in the South End from other developments where we can try it. But the hope would be that this doesn't just stay in this one geography, but that we could actually bring this other places. Yeah, and one more question: Is this two? Is this two plus million dollars? Um, is this the price of the buyout of the four thousand square feet that isn't being used? Did I hear that? Is that correct? Yes. This is a buyout on that extra space, so that's that's a developer buying back the four thousand square feet so they can do a different use. That's right. Yeah. So they provided the six thousand ish square feet, you know, on site, and they bought out of the rest of the commitment. Um, so that was calculated by the BPDA. Yeah. And then I think um, to the point about the West End, we could definitely look and see how much of our funding has gone to the West End. I would say we have a grant open right now. We have our Boston Cultural Council grant um, that I know 
I think the West End Museum has applied to before. I don't want to say I know, but I feel like I've seen that. Um, and we have a reopened Creative Boston grant right now, which is grants up to $50,000 specifically for organizations that have been negatively economically impacted by COVID-19 and need funding to help reopen. So I would say, um, Duane, if you've got some, some specific thoughts about you know things that need support, we'd be happy to chat and see how that um, fund might apply. It's open right now, so it's really good timing. Now, do you, have, do you have anything to add? Are you finished, Kara? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, just a, a little bit more detail maybe about some of what we think we could provide through this. Um, I mean, I mentioned technical assistance. Um, there's different issues that organizations have run into, like how to talk to your board about the fact that you're about to take a risk in terms of changing your operating model and running a space you know, building a pro forma and a business model based on operating a facility, how to raise capital funds, um, even things like understanding leasing terms and being able to be in those negotiations and be fully informed about how that's going to impact your organization. And that's some of what we think we could provide in addition to grants to organizations. And yeah, Nida, anything that you want to add? Sure. I just want to make it clear that the this is will be a new fund. So the Boston Cultural Fund is different from our Boston Cultural Council grants, which is what just Cara, um, Chief Elliot Ortega just spoke about. So those are open right now. Our deadline is October 15, and you can email us for more information and guidance to apply for those grants. But this, um, particularly for this fund, um, is different, and we you know, we would like to use it. And this will be like the $2 million um, that will go into this fund. Okay. Liz, do you have any questions? No, I'm intrigued by- Sorry, I'm, Councilor Braden. It's fine. I'm intrigued by the concept and, and Cara, you and I can have a conversation later <laughs> about how this might apply. I know, um, Councillor, you're thinking about how this could fit in with the, with the work we were just doing. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we're we're always thinking about these things in all and brightness. We try and preserve our arts community. So um, and we'll have a conversation at another time. It certainly looks like my only concern is 2,000, 4,000 square feet um, commercial space um, I hope we didn't under um, undervalue the space. Two thousand two million dollars doesn't seem like that much these days. But that's the question for the BPDA. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a question for the BPDA. I will say, I, I uh, my impression is that they really they thought more aggressively about that um, than they could have. So, uh, but it is it's a really interesting question of how to value that square footage for sure. Um, and I think it, this is a, a unique situation in the case of the zoning, but um, as there are other areas that are going through planning processes or rezoning, I think it's something that we can really learn from. So happy to talk more about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, if, if, if developers are willing to um, give space and then we can use the money, that's, that's whatever type of mitigation or, or, or agreements to actually operate the spaces, then that's really a, a good way, I think, to, to start thinking about it. Uh, so is this, is, um, sorry, um, Councillor Baker, is this the first such pilot we have done, um, Cara, or are we, are, are we other models that we've been doing? Now, this would be the first um, of its kind in the sense that it's, it's really thinking about the entire picture. Um, so we've helped organizations find space. We've worked with through the development review process to advocate for spaces, but this is the first time we're really trying to put things together. Um, it is based on a couple of other programs around the country and cities and expensive cities um, because other cities are trying to figure this out. Uh, and I should say, even though we're proposing this program design right now, we definitely will be having at least one community meeting um, with, with our arts and culture community and with organizations that have gone through trying to take advantage of these kinds of spaces in the past and I've run into different obstacles just to make sure we're, we're really thinking this through and getting some feedback. So um, this is still in the proposal phase, I would say, yeah. um, but yeah. would love to launch something early uh, 2022. It, it, it's cool. almost like we could, we could start thinking about IDP and adding in an arts use. We have uh, homes, uh, you know, uh, talk about homes and job training or affordable housing and job training. If you added a third, third piece to that for 
affordable art space, it, it might be a, a something good to um, start thinking about as a as a whole when we're changing around. With IDP, we talk about every year, so maybe it's time to start adding the arts in that conversation. Well, singing singing my song, Councillor, <laughs> would yeah, be really well, excited you know, about that. <laughs> Yeah, we. I think we should have the conversation. Council Braden and I could work on something like that together. Um, That'd be amazing. Well, I think, I think we're good here today. I don't think we need to move any further. I think we should be able to move this along. We'll see what happens. You know what we get from feedback from the public, but I see it as as a positive step forward, and um, we'll report out next week. Sounds good. This hearing is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Bye-bye.